somebody who has no clue what they're doing with this thing what we've got here is a fender pawn shop base six made in mexico they are different from the regular fender base six or the squire base six the basics come out in 1961. I think it ran up until maybe the late 60s, possibly early 70s, not sure. Came out with some Japan made basics, I think in the maybe the 80s or early 90s. I'm not sure about that either. I do know they made this pawn shop series 2013-14 about a year. They differ in that their switching, the pickups is different, uses a five-way blade switch rather than the each individual switches for the pickups like the regular base six or the Squire Classic Vibe. They make a base six as well. It also has a humbucker in the bridge position. This is not a Jazzmaster pickup it looks like it but it's actually a jay-z hb humbucker alder body comes standard with 24 to 84 strings 30 inch scale they're tuned just like a regular guitar as far as you know e to e except they're one octave down got the volume tone this one actually still has the plastic, and I don't know if it'll show, but this, this one still has the plastic on the pick guard. So they're kind of a special deal. Got a C, C neck, nine and a half inch radius on the fretboard, rosewood fretboard. Got the classic style tuners. So pretty pretty neat guitar if you know what you're doing it also has a jazz master style trim which i find to be kind of somewhat useless on this guitar it also has the i don't know this one looks like it i don't know that it's got the it's got the bridge that you know like a jazz master that moves but this one not sure we'll find that when we get the strings off so my my directive with, with this is to uh, clean it up and change strings, and if I can find them, we're going to put string joys. Base 6 medium, 24 to 90 gauge, which will make it a little bigger up here. I know people say that the, these aren't, 84s aren't, aren't bit heavy enough. Don't know. I don't know much about this thing, but anyway, it's kind of neat. Get a lot of different sounds out of it if you know how to play it. I'm not sure exactly. It's more like you could pick. It's not much of a strumming guitar to me. Now, I don't know. I, this ain't my thing. I like it. I wouldn't mind to have one. It ain't my thing. So I'm going to pull the strings off. 
give it a good clean up, check everything out on it, and uh, so I'll get these strings off and we'll count, do a little to it and see what it looks like. Okay, <clears throat> did the neck off, polished the frets up. And this fretboard is really soaking up the oil extremely dry. You know, it's not uncommon, especially on the cheaper bargain guitars, for them to be dry when they come. But a guitar this age to be this dry, it's not something common to, to me in the southeast U.S. To, you know, usually don't have that many fretboards that are that dry. I know the customer just came back from some desert areas out west and he just picked this up and it's possible that he picked it up out there, you know, in a real dry climate. I have no idea where he got it. I don't ask stuff like that, but that's possible because this fretboard really dry, but it's also a really nice looking neck. It's almost got just a little bit of little bit of bird's eye and it just looks ever so slightly not really even going to show up on the camera but really a nice nice looking neck we got a barcode some scribble here there and yonder on it and i can't really make out anything as far as a date on the neck you know, I can run the serial number. It's going to come back 13 or 14. In the neck pocket, there's no shim, but there is a date that says 21 July. And then the rest of it's kind of smudged to where you can't see it. But you can see the neck pocket looks pretty, pretty cool. It's almost like, you know, this thing got, they almost went with a tilt function on this. Although it don't have it, it does have this piece in the neck. So that may have been something they were considering. And then didn't do it or whatever, I don't know. Don't know about that. But that's a really, really nice looking neck. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the body up. Like I said earlier, it still has the plastic on the pit guard, which I'm not going to remove. He seemed rather happy that it still had that. And if you're just starting working on guitars for other people, if they don't ask you to do something, don't do it. If they bring their guitar in and it's, you know, as old as this one and it's still got the plastic on the pit guard, don't do them no favors by tearing that off. If they want it off, they can take it off. So I'm going to clean this body up, put the neck back on, and we'll get the strings back on it. Okay, we're going to go go by the same rule with this bass as we would any guitar with these, with these you know, old style tuners, the vintage style tuners. It's got the, the holes on the top. You're going to measure just a little past two tuners past where you want to be. And you're going to cut that string. Then we're going to give it a little bend. We're going to stick it down in the hole. And give it a wind. Winding the string down toward the, the headstock. And you'll come out just right with the amount of string that you have on your tuner. Best locking tuners ever been designed. I'll just state, state that. You can have all your knobs, all your whatever. This, these wound correctly will stay. They're not going anywhere. Best locking tuners made. So anyway, we're going to continue on with that. When you get out here where you're out on these end, you know, just guesstimate your positions to get your, to cut your strings. That's all there is to that. All right, guys, that's, that's got the strings on it. Done a little work on the action. I'm going to let the customer come in, let him play it, decide exactly on the action. 
It doesn't have a shim in the neck. And these things are, even though this has the better bridge, it don't have all the little small grooves. It's just got the one big groove. You're still dealing with that brake angle. Whether these want to slip, they don't seem to want to. But we made to get the brake angle right. We're about to put a shim, depending on the action he wants on it. I'm not sure. I'm going to let him decide that. But it's all cleaned up, new strings, and tuned somewhat. Every tuner I got in the shop, the battery suddenly died. So I tuned it by ear, and that one's not right. But anyway, that's not the easiest thing for me to tune by ear. So I'm trying to think if I've left anything out on this thing. It does have the lock and trim, just like a Jaguar. Um, so that's pretty much it we got everything looking good shined up this thing's in pretty good shape these are getting really hard to find and they're getting really expensive I can't remember what they sold for new somewhere I think in the neighborhood of $600 I think now they're $2,600, $1,700, and in this condition here, this one's got a few little bruises on it, but nothing, nothing major at all. No buckle rash on the back, but definitely an interesting guitar. One cool thing about, uh, one cool thing about, you know, working on guitars is you get to, uh, you get to play everybody else, so, uh, you know, that, you get to see what you like and don't like just by, by, without having to buy it or go try it. Somebody will bring it in, you get to try it. So, I would definitely, you know, give one of these a go. I mean, maybe this classic vibe or something, I think they're somewhere around four or five hundred bucks or so, I think. Might give one of those a try, but these pawn shop editions are, you're pretty hard to find just made that one year or, or part of one year part of maybe two all together anyway uh that's about it guys on this one more stuff coming up maybe the next couple videos i'll show you my my little dream guitar that i picked up recently that i'm in love with right now so anyway appreciate everybody subscribing if you hadn't subscribed please consider it and then uh Everybody take it easy until the next time. See you.